Hello everybody, we're talking about winged stern today and we're doing the AI test and we can see right here that he just used Sadly's TMR because this person had Sadly's TMR on the, the ruin, or not the ruin stern, so the wing stern, it's one of the various stern units that we have here. So the, the first thing was the TMR, I want to see him use something else. There's his re-raise ability and now this this test isn't going to work out because guess what? This person turned off all his other skills. So that's it. Well, we hopefully I can find somebody else. Now, of course, I did actually have another video queued up. So let's take a look at what this turn does. He's going to use four skills. So that's quite a bit of priority. He's wearing his own TMR. By the way, he has his sub job on his own sub job. So let's see. The first thing this guy is going to do is he's going to use his team buff. So this is the Steel Wings team buff. It gives AOE resistance. I think it's pretty important for him. Uh, you know, with Zoma, I need to go kill some of these elementals. But with Stern, he gets another shot. Second priority, his re-raise, time of regeneration. Uh, very, very important. That's actually uh, a pretty clutch priority right there. So let's see what his third priority is he's got two more skills he, he could use right now whoops i went too far third priority okay that was his tmr ability now you might notice the ap restore did not go off that's because this guy didn't have his stern at uh you know 50 faith so final option here that is new moon speed it's the crit rate and agility buff for himself so he used his team buff first he used his re-raise second, and then he used the Living Blade of the Underworld, his TMR skill, followed by his agility, crit rate, single target buff. So all in all, pretty good priority order. All right, with the AI test out of the way, let's talk about the rest of Stern's kit. And there are some cool things here. He's got some good utility. We'll start there. Uh, but he is missing a few things that I think that are kind of important. So first of all, he's got a barrier break. It's a short range barrier break, two squares but it is non-elemental which means that if you hit sephiroth with this you're getting them on two counts because you're breaking his barrier his precious little barrier but you're also dealing non-elemental damage that is going to go right through all of that elemental resistance up that he gets his light resistance up buff that he gets all that kind of stuff doesn't matter the only thing he can do to prevent that is to build some slash resistance which means that if Stern gets close enough to do this two square away move on Sephiroth, then he can actually do some pretty good damage against Sephiroth. So that's kind of neat. Okay, uh, same thing with uh, Lucia. Barrier break, then just pop her. You know, resistances won't help. So he also has re-raise removal on a big ol' AoE, similar to Gilgamesh. He has healing power down, he has counter chance down, and he has very high accuracy. And we'll talk about how high later on, but he's got very good accuracy. Multiple plus 30% hit moves. His AP management is excellent because he has acquired AP up on his kit. He has AP consumption down 10% on his kit. And then his farmable sword will also give him another 15% AP consumption down. So it's 25% total. It means that you can build some good builds without some AP restores if you really need to. He also has haste. It comes off of his limit burst, uh, and when he re-raises, he also gets some CT up. So uh, all in all, and actually when he when he re-raises, he gets some AP as well. So a lot of good stuff from his various buffs. He also has an accuracy buff on his kit, so he gets plus 30% hit chance from uh, two moves, but then he also gets a 30% accuracy buff. So he can he can really hit if he really needs to, but. He's missing the Dispel, the Courage removal are the two biggest things. I think the Dispel, like the lack of Dispel or, or longer range barrier break as well, means that he will be attacking into barriers, he will be attacking into fully buffed units, and you need to find a way to bring that with you to kind of support him. Uh, otherwise, you know, that's not ideal. Next up, let's talk about damage, and Stern has a big ol' attack stat. He can do some serious damage. He's just kind of missing one big thing here, which is the slash resist penetration. I put it in red because he has it, but it's it's 40% on a skill. There's no innate. So he gets 20% from his sword, 40% from a skill. Uh, that skill can be dispelled. It, oh, he only has three uses. He has to use it. So there are some you know downsides to him for sure in terms of slash attack resist penetration. He does have, you know, your standard 40% defense penetration. He's got chaining skills. He's got 
not really multiple attack types because he all he has is the the slash all over his kit and then he has the ninja move that is a uh, non-type elemental attack so that's one move and you might not use that sub job you might want to use his main job sub uh, and you might want to use paladin for the barrier or for sentinel or something so uh he but his his limit burst is really interesting because it gives we, we talked he, get, he gets haste uh but it also gives him that that physical damage 20 percent up the same thing that sorrow and uh has and uh um that i believe i believe bradley has and i'm totally blanking right now but it, um <clears throat> he has lots of power he just doesn't have the penetration so that's that's the biggest concern about his his damage uh he also doesn't deal with protect so if somebody can put on protect it's a good way to, to deal with him too so just stack slashers this stack uh get some protect on your units and uh you're gonna be in decent shape against winged stern we then have the durability section and this one is is okay there's not a lot of stuff on here though you might notice so hp his hp is good not great like it's definitely a good a good level of hp uh it's not as high as sephiroth's for example but it's good he has decent resistances slash resistance in particular is at a very nice starting 20 percent he has good aoe resistance i think he gets 25 percent innately and then another 20% from his uh, active abilities. So AOE resist, he, he's going to be like a lot of the units we're getting right now. Keo and, and Mustang, for example, live and die by not getting single target attacked by sticking near a tank. Like King Mont is absolutely essential for those two units. And so if you're playing uh, Wing Stern, you're going to have to think about very carefully who your tank is going to be, uh, you know, if it's going to be uh, Engelbert or maybe you're going to use somebody else like you're running something with Alphonse. I don't even know, like, but you have to think about that. That's really important. So he does have an attack barrier. So it's on the Paladin sub. So that's good if you, um, you know, if you want him to use it. The problem is, is that he has so many dang TP skills and he really likes all of them. So it's hard to prioritize all of these TP skills. He does have re-raise. It's a really powerful re-raise. He has multiple uses and he has reflex. So yes, there's lots of counter chance down right now, but uh, still reflex is reflex is reflex. It's really good. He is not the most durable unit at by any means at all, but he is he is uh, good with that, uh, that AOE resistance. And, and as long as you have some cover for him and some heals, he is going to be in okay shape. I wanted to mention that in global, we have Sylvie, who's a global first unit, and uh, that is a huge boost for Ringstern, really big deal. Also, another good thing for his survivability is that we have, uh, sorry, he can equip the Brigandine. So that is another 10% AOE resistance. Very, very good for uh, for our boy's turn and 20 defense as well. So really good piece of gear for the, uh, you know, if anyone has it, obviously you put it on them and uh, if, you're looking at what to farm in the raid revival then uh, you know this is a good choice as well so uh yeah we're going to talk about the cons next and before we do that real quick uh, i just want to mention that if you want to support the channel you can do the usual like and subscribe but also there is a channel membership i never talk about it ever you know this is one of the first times uh, but i have been doing some uh member only videos they're not like ones that i'm withholding from you know everybody else they're, they're videos i don't normally make so they're just something to consider uh the videos that i've made so far have been like little guild battle test sessions that i've done or maybe an arena session so things i don't really commonly make for the channel uh and something that i would be doing on my own time and i decide oh, i'm just gonna flip the camera on uh and then make a little video and talk about the team that i'm building for that day and put it up there so if you're interested in seeing those and you want to support the channel the channel membership is there and if you don't want to i will I promise not to bring it up too often. So uh, yeah, let's get into the cons. So with the cons, uh, there's a few. Only three attacks on his main kit is is a big one. Uh, it means you his sub kit becomes pretty important to get some more attacking skills. This is more of a guild battle specific thing. It's not going to be a problem in arena. Uh, the no innate slash pen is obviously a con and the, the limit burst being super freaking good, but only having the one use for guild battle again a con uh, when you tie such a, a key part of the kit in my eyes to a limit burst that's a big deal the barrier break is super strong as we talked about but the range is very very low which means and because some of his aoe's are so big he has multiple big aoe's like uh, gigantic aoe's it means that he can hit people i think five or six squares away so that you know when when people are approaching he's not going to use his barrier break on them and he will have to attack into barriers so just something to consider uh you know for 
uh, for this guy, if you're going to be pulling for him, that there are some limitations for him. We can do the comparison as well. This is the same one I used last week. I just put winged stern at the at the top there, and he's he, he compares to King Bradley and Sephiroth, two of our most recent 100 cost units. You know, not too favorably. I think both King Bradley and Sephiroth are better units than than Stern is. Stern's got the power, he's got the accuracy, and he's got the best slash resist of all of them, but. You know, other than that, I think that the other two, you know, bring a lot more utility to their kits and they bring more survivability. Um, Stern has overall good stats like you can't fault them there. Like he's a he's a 100 cost unit. I just think that he's not quite as powerful as other 100 cost uh, units. He doesn't have the penetration that Bradley has, for example. He doesn't have the survivability of Sephiroth with his elemental resistances. Uh, but he is he is good to take on Sephiroth if you support him because of uh, that barrier break. So something to keep in mind. Let's talk about some of the equipment for Stern. He has a TMR. I actually really like this. It's an armor with some okay stats, but the, the effect here is two use, single target, increase human killer 25%. Or physical attacks and then auto restore five percent so this is really good in pvp um, to get an auto restore but also an offensive boost to be able to combine those two things is very powerful and with the support that we have for acquired ap up and the uh, amount of in-house in kit uh, ap consumption down and stuff that we're seeing this is you know usable over bells for some units and you know if, if i were to ever get this i'd be pretty happy with it but it's not so good that you know you should be pulling for him or anything just for the tmr we can also talk about his sword it's really good for him and for well kind of for a few other units but at the same time i don't know if those those units need it because they're like all tanky type units here but the, the sword has a uh, spe specific effects some human killer for him and then ap consumption down 15 and slash attack penetration now because this is a penetration sword it's absolutely absolutely a must equipped Equipped for him, there are other good swords, like for example, the Warrior of Light Sword plus six has so much light attack and stuff on it. That's pretty interesting, but I I still think this is just too important for Stern. And it's actually gonna be a really good weapon for a lot of new players to farm in general to get a slash attack resist pen sword uh, for their account because I think the last one was the engine blade from the Final Fantasy 15 collaboration. So this is a good chance to get it. It also has decent accuracy, 24, so uh, new players especially would want to build an aim version and a uh, assault version and some experienced players might just build the assault uh, you might build two or you know it depends on what, you, what your evade hunting gear loadouts kind of look like but it's a good sword definitely want to farm it uh, i'll make two okay in this part of the video we're going to take a look at the japanese meta i put it to top 20 guild battle you can see stern is down in the bottom right there behind uh, bartz who is a free 100 cost light unit so that's kind of cool that you could put them together. It definitely makes sense that, you know, you would see both of them used quite often right now in JP specifically. So he is being used in JP at this point, which means that if you're gonna be pulling for him, he's not gonna drop off in a week. He's gonna be around for a while now. Dark is super pre prevalent, um, which means that it makes it harder for light to survive in, in a lot of cases because your weakness is out there of course you're strong against them too but you know you are you are weak to them so let's take a look at what kind of teams people are actually building okay so here's some sample teams here we can see some pretty obvious ones warrior of light barts and stern makes sense you have the tank you're protecting your stern very good uh, lucio being used here with barts and stern uh what else there's evasion so elena and then Locke, and then stern and then here's a really interesting one. We've got Bartz, but with Bradley and Stern. These are all attack teams. So when you look at an attack team, it's a lot easier to build a free team because you just want three stars or six if possible, and you can target a wide uh, you know, amount of teams that you want to fight. Uh, at least sometimes you can. But when you go to defense, you have to be way more specific um, than you normally can be because if your team doesn't get defends it's just dead and then that's over so it has to be able to take on certain things that you're expecting and it has to survive multiple fights generally you need a healer now again i have to bring up that jp does not have sylvie so if we're going to see a healer here it's going to be somebody like velas but what we're seeing right now uh is some similar teams to what we were just seeing all right so that's going to be it for this video hopefully i answered all your questions about stern except for the one most important one which is should you pull and I think that Wingstern is going to be a great addition to the light cast. I think 
that he's very powerful, he's got a lot of attack, but he doesn't quite meet the bar of the recent 100 cost units. So as a non-limited unit, right after a very busy collab season, it's hard to justify spending any Vizior on him. So if you have Sylvie in a good tank, you have Warrior of Light, you have Engelbert, you know, um, he's going to be viable for you, undoubtedly. He's going to be able to take on evade teams for you. He'll be able to take on some light, uh, some dark teams right now for you. But uh, you could even fit Velus in there if you really wanted to make him work. But I think that most players should probably be skipping him, in my opinion. I think if you're looking to do a sword knight combo with Bradley, here's your chance. But I don't think that's going to be great for a lot of players, depending on what kind of support they have for that comp composition. So I really do think it's for people that that built Sylvie and want to use Sylvie. And otherwise, it's going to be a skip for a lot of us. And a lot of us, that decision's made for us because, you know, you spent all your viz on the club unless you're me. And, you know, I'm trying to give my viz away. I, they just won't take it. They just keep giving me the units. I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, yeah, hopefully that's useful for y'all. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all soon in another video.